tell us a bit about you guys, how you met, and the decision, decision behind starting Innovation Labs. How is Innovation Labs born and why? We go that right back. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, let me let was, me start. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So uh, for me, it's a long life uh, friendship relation. Uh, I looked at Andre as my first source of technical inspirations as a very young student. I was a freshman. He was already uh, engaged with a lot of technology, and I envy his technical abilities. So first. He was a tech guru for me, so no business side to it, uh, just a very deep and intense technical proficiency and uh, on, on various subjects, from networking to security to operating systems to programming elevators, so a lot, hardware, software, everything. And uh, this is more than 25 years ago. And I managed to stay in touch with him. And uh, then we, we started discussing what are the limits of engineering education. And from that point on, he was also engaged with the business world. And I was more than happy to get some part of this knowledge closer to students. And uh, from there, we, we thought, how we can make it even bigger, not just for one afternoon where you come discuss with the students, but to make it as a nudge for young students to go further. And this is where Innovation Lab started. Yeah, from, from my side, um, I you know, met Trezvan all those years ago and uh, we had a very uh, a powerful trustful relationship, uh, starting from the technical, uh, his technical abilities as well. Um, and, uh, and, and then uh, along the road, uh, Mike's business experience was mostly with uh, Californian companies uh, and, uh, and with the open source community. Uh, and, uh, and because of that, I mean, I traveled to the US and I saw that many uh, universities have a startups program. Uh, so, you know, I got inspired by that. and. Uh, um, in parallel, I was uh, just before we started Innovation Labs elected president of the Romanian Association of Companies, ANIS, and um, and I saw that you know we had uh, big uh, multinational companies in the association and also uh, smaller Romanian companies, most of them service companies, uh, and you know looking in the future, I at least saw that. Uh, salaries will increase and uh, that services, uh, the services part that uh, had a very, very strong cost uh, component to the business, the fact that we were cheaper than other geographies uh, is going to slowly deteriorate. Uh, and uh, uh, I thought that, you know, it, it, this is a very good moment to uh, start discussing about building products in technology. And uh, you know what? Uh, and all, all this concurred uh, into you know discussing with Razvan. I, I was also teaching a little bit at the university, uh, so I, I understand. Quite a uh, lot. I it's an understatement. He was teaching the operating system course, which is a core course in engineering, full semester, not just from time to time. And, and, and Polytechnica is a very technical university, and uh, is, is, is you know if I can compare it more like MIT, let's say. But you know even if, uh, that has a lot of uh, very technical people not necessarily business uh, at all. Uh, but even MIT has a startups program. So even there, you can find a lot of people who think about uh, building products. So uh, we said, you know, let's, let's start something. And uh, I, initially, I wanted to start it inside of uh, ANIS, uh, like a startup program that didn't really go anywhere. I mean, it didn't, it didn't start. Uh, no, nobody was really interested, although they understood the need. They're not interested in, you know, putting money and effort behind it. Uh, so then, uh, at some point, a big company, uh, knowing that was in the board of Anis, uh, knowing that I want to do a, like a startup program, told me, you know, we have some money, we can give you some money if you want to do a startup program. So you know, I called Resvan. Let's. Do, do, but do. this was uh, 2012. So nowadays, everybody is talking about startups. At that point, startup was a 
crazy thing to do. So something that you do uh, for pleasure, for passion, not for business. And this is what uh, Andre actually started uh, combating. So he said, no, you need to produce a value, not just to follow your dream. Of course, passion is important, but if you cannot make it as a value proposition, then it will die when the founder finds anything else uh, distracting. So we, we started very serious, confrontational. It's not just about something that you do out of love. It's a lot of brain and uh, skill and network engaged and you build it in time. You started to talk about this, but how was the startup ecosystem back then? And even before 2012, uh, was there an ecosystem in Romania? In, in 2010, uh, I left the company that I was uh, heading back then, uh, that was an American company, to go back to entrepreneurship, to invest in startups initially. And uh, there was almost nothing. I mean, there was uh, this co-working place, uh, the Bucharest Hub, uh, that uh, had some money, uh, invested in like 10 startups back at the time. I met some wonderful founders, like Vladimir is one of them, for instance, uh, back then. But that was almost it. I think there was a, a one pitching a Venture Connect, one pitching uh, uh, event that was started by like a law firm uh, by Mary Andronic. Uh, and uh, then I, you know, coming from the US, I mean, I, I knew and I took a very systematic approach to, uh, to let's say, ecosystem build up because I, w I needed it. I needed to find a way to do more entrepreneurship. And I took. Uh, a report from the Babson College in the U.S. Uh, that outlines the, all, all of the components of uh, a startup ecosystem, of an innovation ecosystem. And there are so many. I mean, there's like, you know, uh, academia had to have uh, startup programs, uh, venture capital funds that uh, like zero, angel groups, uh, uh, success stories, uh, support from the government, uh, and uh, and the functioning market. And, and all of those, I mean, we missed so many of those. So... Uh, uh, I think at the beginning, uh, you know, I you know remember, you know, Bogdan Yordake had uh, just started How to Web. Uh, Radu Georgescu had was just sold um, Rav2, so like a success story, and he started to also invest in startups. Uh, and um, there are all, all these people that we wanted to to do something. So uh, one of the thing was uh, with Resban Innovation Labs. But uh, we had a prototype before. We, we had, uh, that, that, I'm coming back to that. Yeah, oh. and, and, and I'll let you talk about that because that sure. was not built on nothing. It was built on something that Razvan already started. Uh, and uh, that's why I turned to him and not to somebody else. Uh, and, and then also like Tech Angels, for instance, which is an angel group that's now doing much, much better than at, at the beginning. Uh, but then even we didn't have VCs, so I, start, I, I tried to influence even uh, the creation of today's VCs that can invest from, uh, from zero revenue, zero day uh, VCs. And, uh, you know, the thing is that it, it, we were m many people doing that and uh, we each focused on different parts. Now you see all the things that now are functioning are led by people who t 10, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, uh, met in, you know, met and discussed between them, there's nothing, what can we do, so. <laughs> and now, you know, one day you are young and, uh, you know, <laughs> soon you are a founding father, you know, 13 years <laughs> later, so. Um, it seems, uh, to me, it seems like yesterday, but uh, uh, I look around and I see so many um, components, so many people uh, involved in the ecosystem and uh, it's so very good. And yes, and uh, and uh, innovation the first time was, actually. was built. Uh, no, no, we we, we built it together. In, even the prototype. Correct. So actually, w what we uh, decide uh, the problem uh, was uh, the lack of business understanding from the technical people, and we thought it's easier to take engineers and engage them with uh, um, business mindset than the other way around. We. Both of us are engineers, so we have some street credit uh, to these uh, would-be entrepreneurs, and let's try to prototype something. And then we went to a very close friend who is part of Innovation Labs for the last 12 years, uh, Teo Chaushu from Keysight. It was a company that Andre actually rose from seven employees to 250, 300 people, but 
Teo Chaushu is the CEO. And um, we, we pitched him, we want to have a business idea contest for tech people. And he said, great, we'll make it a uh, high tech uh, business challenge. And uh, we thought, okay, we have $25,000, which at that time was a lot of money. How did we, we divide it? And Andre said, we don't want to have a price for everybody. This is not the aim of our competition. We have just one price and we'll have the winner takes it all. And we thought it's so easy. It's entrepreneurship in real life. And it was the first time when we did it. And it was so strange because at the final debate, there were two very valuable teams. And the jury, so we actually had just seven teams, but the first two were so very good. And the jury debated for more than one hour and everybody was concerned. We were in a very nice five-star hotel. Everybody was enjoying it, but nobody would understand. How can you debate? There are just seven teams, just pick one. And um, the funny part was we had a team who took the prize. Uh, they were doing uh, recruiting business for uh, IT people. And the second one was a uh, uh, ride-sharing app. Uh, and Andre was the president of the jury and said, we didn't expect it to have such mature teams. Uh, we are glad to announce Growingly was the winner, but the second runner up will be um, uh, Clever Taxi and I'll become an investor. The funny part was that we just gave them the money and uh, the uh, recruiting company actually they went uh, and spent it all during summertime just on uh, uh, team building and uh, spending time on seaside. And we thought, oh, it was such a poor investment. Uh, Five years later, actually, this was one of our greatest success because they had an exit. They went to Canada and then they have an exit to Udemy, which is tens of uh, millions of dollars. And the second team is Clever Taxi, uh, where Andre actually started doing everything from putting up the technical background to I, I, building yeah, they, business I, I bridges. I didn't do all that much. I mean, I did invest and I did help them a little bit with the server, but you know, they, they've done it all. I mean, uh, you had they, the great they, they founders, only, you, the, but you, you felt the, the, the thing quality that of back the then, I mean, these were like the, the only two or maybe three or maybe four, or maybe seven teams, all of, you know, in, in, in the whole of Ukraine, I mean, there are not other teams, you know? So uh, that's uh, when we decided to, uh, to do something and to show students. I mean, I was looking from from the outside where students are graduating, but you know, Razvan was looking from the inside of the university where students are going out in the world, right? And uh, and if you if you take uh, Stanford for example or any other your big university from the U.S., uh, professors uh, uh, encourage students to either go on the let's say on a research path or to maybe go into in this industry and get a job or go to a startup, you know? So there's like three paths where you can, uh, as a professor, encourage students to go to, right? Well, while in Romania, back then, there were only like research and get a job. Yeah. So there were no third path yeah. that, uh, and so what we did was create the third path, yeah. essentially. What were your ex expectations at that point? And after seeing this, let's say, prototype edition going so well, uh, how did you imagine the program evolving? I don't know. Did you ever think that it would get so much momentum and become what Innovation Labs is today? The, the first year was uh, was hard, but it had a lot of great teams. I mean, but in the first year we had to entice students to go to 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 Innovation Labs, and uh, uh, it was like I said, one uh, one big company uh, said, you know, we're gonna give you some funds, uh, and so we started an NGO. To, to run this program, you know, because you, you need money, right? Uh, and funny thing is that if you look at our sponsors, I, I mean, very few of them are technology companies and very, very few of them are Romanian technology companies. So, uh, so we saw a lot of interest from foreign companies that understand that innovation is done through startups and they have like, they have a business in this country and they want to invest in innovation and they see that there's a lot of uh, great people uh, uh, in, you know, students and, uh, and graduates. Uh, so um, the, the thing at, at the beginning was uh, 
uh, was very complicated and uh, the most complicated part uh, was uh, solved by, uh, by Razvan and his team, uh, the, the whole logistical part of putting so many teams. Because we wanted to get as many people as possible. Uh, we wanted to, to be uh, and to create a funnel where we uh, encourage as many students as possible to try, to try and, you know, to fail, but to discover if they have the entrepreneurial gene. Uh, because there is a gene. I mean, you have to, uh, to, to, to be wired in such a way that uh, you accept greater risk for, for a greater reward down the road, rather than a lower risk for, for maybe potentially a lower reward, which is neither of these roads are wrong, but they can be wrong for the wrong person. So they can be, you know, if you only have one alternative, uh, then, uh, then somebody who is more entrepreneurial, who would like, who likes to take risks and be more entrepreneurial, would be very unhappy in a job. That, that, that's all. I mean, uh, and that's all that we wanted to create. We think that people can add value as, as employees anywhere, and uh, that uh, uh, entrepreneurship, in a sense, is also. I mean, there's, it's more complicated than being an employee. I mean, like you know, to be honest. But we wanted to be able to show that. So our, our expectation was that the program will, will grow. Uh, what we didn't expect necessarily is that this will become like a national program and uh, it's going to become like the biggest uh, program. We thought that uh, universities are going to see the benefit and they're going to do it by themselves. So it would be like a pilot program and then it will be taken over by the universities. Uh, but, you know, here we are. I mean, we uh, ten, ten years. 12 years later. Uh, my approach was uh, a little bit different because I was part of the university and every single year we had four, 500 uh, in Politenka students graduating with a project. And I thought it was such a lost opportunity because not, not everyone is an entrepreneur, but some of them would want a market validation, a business perspective to their project. And I thought maybe out of those students, a few would be more motivated if they would be evaluated not just by professors, but some people with business experience. And I, I thought it would be a great opportunity to offer students graduating from bachelor, from master, this opportunity. Inside the university, not you, at that point, if you want to start a business, you'd have to leave the university. Uh, and uh, I thought, why do this? We do have great technical skills inside the university. If we can bring some of the mentors, and unfortunately, some of the mentors had a very old uh, idea about the university. Uh, universities in Romania, as other parts of the society, evolved very fast. So having a pretext to bring uh, graduates, alumni inside uh, as a university in a business friendly environment actually uh, change the image and the trust in the university. Building such bridges was beneficial for the students, but also for us as an institution, because at that point we were in a shouting games between universities and companies. Companies would uh, uh, criticize, wow, this is lacking from our curriculum. And of course, universities would uh, have uh, very bad opinions of, about the companies because they would have no place to meet. Nowadays, of course, there are multiple opportunities, but having both the university and the companies uh, with the goal of supporting young, entre young entrepreneurs is the best uh, type of relation. Uh, do you remember what was the reaction of the students uh, when you first told them about, look, we are going, we want to do this. It's nice for you. You can have some experience. You can validate your product. And also the mentors. How did you attract mentors to the program? I, I think it was easy with the mentors. I mean, uh, they were, uh, it was easier because it, we were at the beginning, so there are no other uh, places uh, where they could interact. And uh, I knew many of them, and uh, Razvan also knew others. Uh, and they were curious to see, you know, they came curious at the first uh, edition. Uh, and, uh, Do you remember how many there were? How many mentors you found for in, the first in, one? In the first edition, I don't know. And, uh, we have more than 30 at that first edition. 20, now we 30, have, yeah. But we still have some of them from the first edition. Yeah. Diana Olar is part of our board. And other people who 
kept coming year after year, so they never left. 2030, yeah, I think. And um, I, I, I remember it was in the uh, aula of the rectorate, yeah. wired with a lot of antennas. Actually, and, uh, this, this was a, a, a lesson in uh, uh, bootstrapping because so we had a very nice location inside of the rectorate building of Politechnica, which is very, very nice. But two days before the hackathon that would go through the night, uh, it was uh, early March, they removed the windows because they wanted to change the windows. And nobody actually told us because the, at that time we had no events in Politechnica. And they thought, okay, we'll change the, all the windows. And it was so cold. It was a very cold March. And we needed to find solution. And it was very funny because we, like, uh, you go now for a beer, you have uh, burners, yeah? And we had burners inside the building. Nowadays, you cannot do this. And the funny part was, uh, uh, closing the early hours in the morning, the burners would run out. And people would get closer and closer together to extract the last remains of heat that they could find. It was very, very funny. And one of the people that uh, was in that hackathon was Bogdan Vlad. And he was, uh, his uh, birthday was on the second day of the hackathon. And at 12 o'clock, everyone was cheering. They were competing, but also they were cheering and uh, chanting happy birthday. It was such a bounding experience, but we didn't expect it. We didn't expect the reaction of the students, the reaction of the mentors. We had mentors that stayed all the night at that point. So they came uh, Saturday morning, and actually they left uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. We had people so staying with, because you had such an energy, we didn't have such com commitment. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge energy uh, that comes out of uh, an event like this, and uh, everybody who participates sees that. And, uh, you know, you, if you're a mentor, you have a job. I mean, of course, you have a life, uh, with, you know, it's very predictable, you know, and then you get to an event like this and you see huge levels of energy, then you get energized. Uh, and for the students, on the other hand, yes, you, I mean, students have all sorts of events, but uh, an event like this, that it's risky, you know, because you, you develop something and then you have to go and present and then assume yourself, you know, and uh, then, you know, be, be assumed that this is what I want to build for the world. And then you may get laughed at, you know, I mean, like you can get, so, so it's, it's frightening for, for a first time experience. So because of that, and, and this is true all over the world, it's not just here. I mean, most of the startup events are like that. And this is why the bonding through between, you know, would be entrepreneurs, but even later, I mean, the bonding between entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, when we meet, I mean, we have all sorts of meetings. Uh, it's very important. The social aspect of entrepreneurship is very important because no matter how big the company is, the entrepreneur is still at the top. And it's lonely at the top, you know how they say, because it, and so then you, you can only uh, bond with people that uh, are like-minded, that, that who are also lonely at their own tops, so that you can be together, you know, <laughs> and uh, and discuss. And that happens from from the from from the first edition of the hackathon. Uh, somehow people who wanted to take a risk, some people who wanted to uh, to present themselves to the world with the project uh, that was not just theirs, but also theirs and the the teams uh, that was. Uh, our second, and maybe we have time to talk about that. I mean, because our, you know, the clear aim of the program is to uh, help create entrepreneurs, right, and uh, new teams. But the team aspect is very important. How do you form a team that will uh, be to together through different uh, times of hardship? This is something that uh, the, the Romanian uh, education system fails to teach. Uh, for, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, there's a lot of detractors of the education system. I'm not. I think that the educational system, at least, the tech educational system in Romania is pretty good. I mean, it's one of the best uh, in the world, in a, my opinion, with one very big uh, piece uh, missing, the team piece. Uh, there's a lot of resistance from, from the professors and from the academia to let students work in teams at the project. It's a, it's a, I tried even when I was a professor and uh, my assistants were like, no, we cannot let them because only one will work and the other will take a good grade. And like, it doesn't matter, it's like in life, right? And uh, in all universities that I've seen uh, outside of Romania, uh, a team project is the first thing they start when they get into the first yep. year. 
There's like a team of seven people from seven different countries who have to do a project together. And, uh, and this forces you to get outside of your comfort zone. This forces you to know how to communicate with people that are different from you. Uh, and and that was very very important. And also to for argue us. because we have a lot of teams that are collapsing because they don't know how to debate the priorities, uh, product vision, and this is such an important lesson because now we are in a society where we try to avoid any conflict, and a lot of things are lost because things that are valuable you should fight for them. And uh, unfortunately, I think Romania has a very conservative culture. Uh, people are afraid of debating, of arguing, actually. And this is an environment where you know you have to stand for your ideas in front of your team, in front of mentors. A lot of mentors would have conflicting advices. And this is very strange for them. Because in the normal, in the formal education, you have a source of authority. You either ignore it or your bait. So very few options. But in a hackathon, in a program of three months, actually it's for sure you'll have mentors with a lot of experience saying contradictory things. And this is a very important lesson. To, to, to look for your own truth, to commit it, to have the people around you going in the same direction. And, uh, and yeah, and, uh, and and when you form a team and you, when you are in a team, uh, then you know somehow at some point a team leader appears, you know, and that there has to be a team leader. And uh, the team leader, you know, he tries to keep the team together or form another team if that one you know fails or bring new team members or uh, and you know there's another example, uh, Daniel Riza, who was uh, yeah. assembling and reassembling a team and. Uh, doing all sorts of stuff. Then he was with me at VectorWatch and at, at Fitbit, and now he's a director at uh, Google, which is like a, a, a level that's very hard to get to. And uh, he was promoted to that level, uh, uh, and his uh, you know career started in the first edition of Innovation Labs. Actually, actually, by failing, actually, he was not selected. His idea was not selected. And he decided to stick for the hackathon to join another team and by the end of the program, three months later, he was leading the team who joined uh, uh, three months prior. And now, as Andre says, he's a very influential tech lead uh, with a lot of people looking up to him. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, putting putting people in, uh, giving them a sandbox and putting them in a position to. Uh, try to risk something without so much of, uh, of, of an effect, of a you know, negative effect to them. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I think this was, uh, and, and it still continues to be, I mean, uh, but we'll see some of the effects. And uh, we've seen from, from the first three, four years, now there's a lot of uh, successes. And not all of, I mean, most of them are not from those teams or from those products. They are personal successes of people who attended the program and who were able to develop uh, some other aspects of their personality other than the technical one that gets very well developed by the Romanian uh, educational system. So that's, that's our, let's say, uh, contribution and, uh, in a sense, give to the society a place where uh, very good students, uh, the elite of uh, today's uh, Romania, can uh, manifest themselves in other ways and can uh, uh, you know, build up their personality, uh, be uh, very assumed uh, persons and uh, stay in this world and create value uh, for them, for their team, for, for their, you know, country, if you want. We are also in a European culture and uh, Europe is uh, renowned by a lot of focus on happiness, on uh, uh, life, work, balance. And of course, this is important, but it cannot be the only thing because if you measure happiness just in the moment, you'll not evolve. And uh, in time, uh, you'll, beca you'll become bored with everything you have. You need challenges in your life. You need to step out of your comfort zone. And this is what we try to uh, get the students a safe environment where they can actually uh, take some challenges and explore their skills, their communities, and uh, because just the safety part, unfortunately, this is a major value in the Romanian society. 
It's not enough. Uh, what I'm telling to the students, you don't become old. You just are looking for more comfort. If you can take challenges, no matter the age, you are still young. And this is what we are trying to do because a lot of people in their 20s are thinking more conservative than people of 70 years old. So you can lose your interest in life in challenges very early on just by following the safe path. So, and of course, the life will not offer you the same satisfaction as the one where, yes, you argue with people, you fail, uh, you meet people that will disagree with you, but this is a very enriching life, a life for a lot of people, and we are trying to help those people uh, step up out of their comfort zone and not pay a huge price uh, for failing. Of course, failing is the best way to learn something, to have a personal experience of, with life. Do you, do you remember how many students or how many teams were for the first edition? I was curious also how many uh, made it to the, to the final demo, demo day. After we we had 12. 12? Yes, and we, we shepherded them, so we didn't lose any. Now we are very strict. We have a lot of selection process. We have a You larger have a lot family. more teams. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, not all of them should have graduate is a program if we are looking with our standards today, but we were at the beginning and we need the data. You cannot have a program without the data. And then we thought, okay, we'll help every single team evolve even a little bit. And it was very funny because the team actually that won in 2012, uh, at the middle of the program, they weren't progressing enough. And Andre uh, took Alexander Radovich and said, uh, you are failing your vision. You are such a great engineer. You have great technical people. Find someone on the business side, pivot your idea. And they pivoted a lot. And in just three weeks, actually, they, they made the progress greater than other teams in three months. And the funny part was, uh, two or three years later, he was invited uh, to one of the demo days event, the closing event. And he's, he was uh, at that time already a founder uh, with investment from United States and said, wow, for me, the greatest part was going to United States and discovering that all the values we discuss in innovation labs are relevant the same in United States. But I, I wasn't able to understand them at the time, but now I see everything we had here as fundamental for the business startup environment in the United States, not just East Europe. Did, did they uh, continue the idea, the project after Innovation Labs? Yeah, and uh, they have... Uh, Who are they? So it, it is called Wild Dream. Uh, the project has a number... Unfortunately, we had very little capital at that time, and the company grew with clients. We hadn't investment. So it was the angels, but very, very few sources of seed money. Uh, there, there were no VCs at that time, but I, I knew that the VCs were preparing to, to, to exist. I mean, uh, the fact that we have VCs yeah. now is the result of, uh, of a plan that was, uh, you know, written like maybe in those days, like, you know, because you had to convince the European Union to allocate yeah. a, a certain amount of money for Romania for early stage funds. Uh, back then, Bulgaria had those, and we didn't. We had for yeah. later stage, but then you know we discussed, and uh, we managed to even influence uh, that. Uh, and now we have VCs. But then, uh, knowing that ten years ago, I realized that we're going to have VCs ten years down the road, and the VCs will not have uh, startups to invest in, yeah. uh, because entrepreneurship is not uh, not the normal way of people thinking in Europe, not just in Romania. I mean, in Europe, uh, entrepreneurship has to be nurtured even more than in the US. In the US, like almost anybody is an entrepreneur. So you have to have uh, ways to, to stop them. And there's a lot of books on how to make sure that what you build uh, is uh, you know, valuable to anybody or like, because the, everybody wants to build something. Whereas in Romania, you know, like build whatever you want. I mean, like even if it's not very, very, you'll figure it out later but just build something that would be of value to somebody uh, and, you know, and, you know, assume this, this entrepreneurship path uh, 
uh, and encourage them, uh, you know, push them down that road. Uh, and uh, and many of them found uh, found found a way to go to uh, like in entrepreneurship. And uh, Radovic right now has uh, a startup that has a very good funding and uh, is like very very uh, hard technology. I wish them all the luck in the world. I think that uh, they have a wonderful product. Uh, Still, the company, the old company exists, but he stepped away to start a new project. But for for many of the participants, like I said, uh, it was uh, another way, like an alternative education uh, outside of uh, the university that uh, uh, was done not just by the professors, but also by business people or uh, entrepreneurs or employees from bigger companies uh, or uh or investors or you know all sorts of people who got involved with the program uh that brought their own vision of the world that for somebody who who is in tech and they you know they they they, they learn how to solve hard problems but they don't learn how to detect what problems are there to be solved yeah they will wait for somebody to give them a problem to be hard and they will solve it that's the educational system and that's great, but you know, some people will not be happy just with that. And the further remote from a user you are as an engineer, the happier you are, which is a problem because the greatest challenge we still have is getting teams to talk to their users. Even if it is a B2B, go talk to that company. If it is a B2C, even easier. But this is the biggest challenge because they uh, want to build a great product before going to meet your client. And this, of course, it takes a lot of time, a lot of investment that can be a waste of time. So customer development is the hardest part for an engineer, still. I'm glad you mentioned, Andre, uh, the part about entrepreneurship and in Romania or, or how it's seen in Romania. And I want to ask you both, uh, when did you, Razvan, you are, I think you're more familiar with this. When did you first start to see in the students from Politecnica this interest in entrepreneurship, in becoming startup founders? And um, I was also wondering what did they knew or know at, the, at this point, even now and even before, uh, I mean, do they have an idyllic image about what it's like to be a founder? I don't know, lots of money and free time. Everybody's a unicorn. Everybody gets <laughs> gets money from uh, from VCs. Uh, not uh, a lot of free time, actually. Everybody understands it. It's a full time commitment, uh, usually with more hours than you'd have in a corporation. But uh, the misconception is you have. Uh, total freedom with your product. And of course, if you have investors in your product, if you have uh, market pressure, yes, customers, of course, you need to be humble and drive the product to the market, not to your vision. And this is their biggest uh, uh, discovery in the process. But, but, but the greater interest, I think, came uh, in, in the last three, four years when, uh, yeah. zero, when, when zero revenue VCs appeared. So, yeah. Uh, because before that, there was not no real funding uh, to to be accessed uh, easily. Uh, now uh, uh, there, there are all these funds that are partners to the program yeah. that are now in the board. I mean, they come and they see the teams. Maybe they don't invest in the just after the program, but uh, down the road, uh, investment they can discuss. In, investment they can discuss with the VC v at v this stage. VC investment is a, is also a, a networking. Uh, re the result of networking, you have to know. I mean, uh, even. You have to know the VCs, and the VCs have to know you in order to invest, to, to build a trust relationship. Uh, and and that's, that's very important because they get to meet them very early on. Uh, so that's, I think, when interest sparked uh, more. Uh, yeah, that, that's my opinion, like three, three four years uh, ago. And, you know, since we've become uh, national and uh, this is uh, largely due to the Romanian American Foundation, uh, to even, you know, Roxana Vitan herself, uh, who always pushed us, you know, make it national. And uh, they also gave us a, a grant for that. 
uh, and it was not easy. It was very, very complicated to get to, to, to replicate and to scale uh, nationally. Uh, we found in the most remote places in Romania a lot of uh, very talented and very, you know, we, we had students, I mean, for me, like two or three years ago, when, when a team of four young men came to me saying that they saw the ad at a party and they applied and it changed their life. Uh, or somebody from a remote village saying that uh, he came to Cluj and then he got into the program and he realized that he can build a, a, a program or something that can be used all over the world by anybody in the in the world and that's a possibility and that you know the even that the, the job of a product manager exists and that is uh, can be global uh, those uh, those are the things that uh, you know keep me very very uh, hopeful in the program and uh, and uh, even though it was very hard for us and, uh, you know, we've discussed many times uh, how hard it is to, to get outside and to, to be able to replicate and with work with partners and to find the right partner in, uh, in every city to work with and the right universities and the right people. Uh, but, you know, through all those difficulties, I'm, uh, I'm happy that we did that. And I'm happy that even if we, you know, uh, if we uh, are able to... Uh, to change a few people that could be successful, that success can mean like, you know, maybe a two or three iPads would be good for, uh, for Romania. And a lot more entrepreneurs. And this is the biggest challenge, managing expectations. Managing expectations from partners that are very eager to engage your students, but in some cases that have unrealistic expectations from what a student as a founder would be willing to do. Managing the expectation of students who would have this idea of greater autonomy through a startup. And as I told you, you need actually to put the product first and not your vision. Uh, also managing the expectation of universities because these are great institution and they would provide a lot of assistance, but of course they would have their own vision. Managing the expectations of uh, even the press, because you cannot have a healthy tech ecosystem uh, without uh, great communication and great media partners. And this is a struggle, we are fighting it, uh, but uh, this is uh, what actually brings a lot of value because we see both the media and the universities coming closer with interest, not just having some very uh, specific piece of uh, interaction and then forgotten uh, for one year. Uh, you mentioned universities and I want to ask you, when did you f see that universities all around the country are getting interested in what you're, what you're doing here with the Politecnica and said it might be something that we could replicate there and also Get a get a bigger, a larger pool of students into entrepreneurship, into tech. Uh, as Andre said, uh, he was fortunate to see the things ten years in advance, uh, and it was a vision by European Union to have people engage uh, with the market as close as possible, as soon as possible. And this uh, European single digital market is one vision that we are constructing, and this vision actually come five years ago uh, through Romanian universities as part of this uh, European identity. And when it becomes so relevant for the European discourse, of course, universities wanted a part of it. And they weren't just uh, responding to our request, our offers, but actually engaging with their own ideas. And this is the moment we started the dialogue and building uh, as partners. How difficult was it to, to manage the program with other universities and also with hackathons all around the country and uh, to, to build it and getting, getting it to the, <laughs> to the final stage, <laughs> the demo <He's>, day? <laughs> uh, not, not me, actually, uh, Flavia, Daniel, actually, they were from day one. Uh, the first time, actually, w w when we started, Andre was engaged with the American ecosystem and said, OK, this is valuable, this is not. But when he said, we need to have a hackathon, uh, I, I posted on Cora. Uh, how to make a great hackathon because Cora at that time was uh, a great source of information and I started debating with people around the world how do we do a hackathon 
And of course, uh, now we have hackathon every single weekend, even multiple hackathon in, in just uh, one uh, weekend. But um, nowadays, we have great uh, communities in every single city. And of course, they are a beacon for a larger region around. We have uh, teams coming from, as Andrei said, very small communities, very small cities in Romania, because great people are spread all around the country. And uh, having this presence uh, year after year, this stability actually, I think, helps a lot of people just paying attention, coming to the community, because, uh, as Andre said, uh, the network you build it in time is not about your present idea, it's about the people you are engaging. How important do you, do you feel or do you think that having uh, in, in Romania programs such as Innovation Labs um, is to, to creating this startup ecosystem? Yeah, I, I think that we uh, are uh, at the beginning of the funnel for other accelerators uh, that uh, are closer to the VC funds. So we uh, help, uh, we're a pre-accelerator, a nationwide pre-accelerator, creating teams for the accelerators and for the VC funds and then for, yeah. for, for the rest of the ecosystem uh, uh, in a way. And uh, it's important or not, I mean, they, they tell us it is and uh, they are in the board of Innovation Labs. So uh, all the VC funds and all, you know, the, and the angels, uh, they are very supportive uh, of the program because it helps bring to light uh, entrepreneurs and teams that may never find out that they're entrepreneurs or may, they may find out when it's maybe too late. So um, I, I think that uh, uh, now we see other programs uh, doing yeah. pre-acceleration for students. Now we see when universities getting some, some of that. Uh, we think that, uh, you know, some universities that we saw having some sort of like entrepreneurship uh, programs, uh, they are not able to get cooperation from the business side of things and they try to teach entrepreneurship. Yeah. And to be honest, we've done that at the beginning, uh, even us, I mean, before uh, Innovation Labs and even before the XIA prize at the big, the XIA contest, uh, there was a course that we, uh, that, that Razvan started uh, and uh, we try to teach product to students in a classroom setting. And what we uh, found out is that you cannot really teach that. I mean, uh, you, you, that the building products has to be a hands-on experience. So you, you can only teach that through practice. And, uh, and I think that, uh, that it's important that also, you know, I mean, that publication like yours uh, exists now. I mean, back then, like 10 years, 12 years ago, there was, there was only maybe one or two business publications that uh, usually uh, had you know the more coverage with the big businesses uh, and uh, they were just you know trying to understand the startup world uh, and uh, as i say i mean if nobody writes about it doesn't it doesn't exist you know and in a, in a country where not just country i mean like uh, in a continent where everybody writes about politicians yeah. too much i mean a lot of politicians exist uh, then a lot of uh, publications write about big companies, so then a lot of big companies exist. Now, finally, there are publications who write about startups, so startups can begin to exist uh, in, uh, in uh, Romania and in Europe in general. It is not uh, an economy of knowledge anymore. It is an economy of attention. And if our attention is driven by the scandal of the day, of course, you will not have your attention to dream big. And connecting inspiration with technical skills is very important. And this is what we are still doing with Innovation Labs and with the new generation of entrepreneurs, of technologies, of businesses. And uh, I, I do think it's not just about what you uh, know to do, what are your skills, but also how big do you dream. And of course, people in their 20s are very ambitious and we want to connect this ambition with a startup environment. Building on this, um, I want to ask you, how can you find people that are entrepreneurial, that are willing 
to they have to, to have this they, crazy idea. They, and they have to in. find themselves in a way. I mean, they have to find themselves in the program. Uh, uh, you know, the the whole life. I think we learn things about ourselves, uh, but we have to be put in in context. So we have to to meet people, to meet new people, different people, or to, or to be put in different contexts to find new things about ourselves. Uh, so uh, we try to open the gates to to everybody who wants to try, uh, and uh, you know about finding themselves. It's, it's they they do that. Uh, they they have to want to do that first. Uh, but if they do, I mean, um, I can guarantee you that if they participate, they will find uh, if they are uh, if they are more of an entrepreneur or maybe more of a uh, manager or people leader. If they are more of a technical person or more of a marketing person. If they are more. I mean, they, that occurs naturally in a team of like five people that have to do the 10 kinds of tasks. Uh, naturally, some people get aligned with one or two tasks that are closer to who they really are. And I, I see this more and more and even, uh, you know, uh, with my daughters now uh, graduating and going through this age, uh, after, after what is after the studies, after university, you know? Uh, who am I, you know, uh, and what, what am I, what is the value that I'm supposed to bring in this world? And the only way to find out, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, is to try. Yeah. You have to try to see what suits you best, what is, uh, and in order to try, you have to have a, an environment that has multiple, multiple things to do. Because uh, if, if you are certain about something, you know, if somebody is certain about, I'm a programmer, for instance, or I'm a marketing person, you know, you then get a job and then you start a career. You, you know your starting point. But somebody who's not very sure, you know, am I a programmer, am I a marketer, or am I a, a designer, or, you know, let's try, let's try. Am I a designer or am I more of a marketer? Am I a programmer or am I more of a, a project manager or, or product manager? Or, uh, try the different paths and see uh, what occurs to you naturally in a team, you know, because if you're by yourself and you can wear two hats, you can wear them alternately and you don't find out if, if what is better for you. But if you're in a team and you see other people that are more suited to the technical hat, for instance, then you get the product hat. And then, uh, you know, you, you start making things happening and then you find out things about yourself. We also, every one of us has uh, this uh, bias of uh, your own perspective and it's easier if you are an engineer to think that uh, the engineering part of a tech product is the most important if you are a marketing person of course you'd think that without marketing there can be no product uh, also if you are a cfo yeah the biggest challenge uh, in a tech uh, product is getting uh, with your money to the next round of investment. A very wise uh, CFO can make all the difference. Uh, and the best part of such a program is that mm, connects people with different perspectives. Of course, this can lead to a self-discovery and to understand that you can be a pre-sales engineer, that you can face clients, even though you never actually discussed with clients before. But the best part for me is that they understand the value that a salesperson can and should bring. Because uh, for an engineering uh, side of things, you think, okay, you are a salesperson, you are just uh, wasting companies' money, uh, getting lunches and beers uh, while we are coding. How many lines of code have you written? I'm a salesperson. It's, this is not the value I'm bringing. And uh, understanding that a salesperson needs to build relations, to have leads, and even if you go to, for a late beers, beer with uh, some potential clients, you need to uh, remember the next day and make a follow-up and build a business opportunity. And if you want to enjoy your evening beer with friends, get a salesperson. Don't do all the roles yourself and understanding what are the metrics, what is a good communication officer uh, doing, even if it is writing zero lines of code, it's part of this program, not just building empathy, but building teams with uh, different uh, success metrics. 
Andrei, I like what you said earlier about discovering yourself and about the question, uh, who are you? And you wear many hats. You're also a founder, you're an investor, you're a mentor. Um, which role do you like best? Or, or does it, do you think that it suits you best? Founder. Founder? Yeah. I want to do things. I mean, that's, that's who I am. I mean, even as an investor, I mean, I, I, you know, I started things or like, you know, I, no, no, I'm starting again a, a, a new startup. Um, but, you know, even if you think of Innovation Labs, I mean, uh, it was a startup at the beginning. And uh, now that's, you know, no longer a startup, uh, by, you know, we're passing the baton to the next generation uh, with Flavia and Daniel. Uh, for me, it's about uh, creating, uh, it's about creating, creating brands, creating teams, creating, I don't know, concepts. Uh, and uh, bringing value to the society that I live in and I decided to live in Romania so I want to bring value here one kind of value here like uh, a societal value if you want with uh, the ecosystem and uh, uh, bring value to my customers that are usually in the US so that's the market that I know best so build products that are uh, for the US market uh, and that's somewhat the, the, the biggest problem that I have is that people who been not not been working for American companies here that, that don't understand the market. They need to understand the market. It's a different market. It's one way to you know one thing to sell technology in the U.S. One thing to sell technology in Romania completely different. Although the technology is the same, that's why the salesperson or the marketing person has to understand the target market. But also the engineer has to understand the target market. And uh, the biggest difference that I see between uh, so as engineers in the U.S. and engineers in Romania is that engineers in the US, no matter what company or what part of the product they work on, they understand the why, the why they're doing that, not just the how. And, uh, and that's, that's also something that we are trying to inspire the generations of, uh, of engineers, even if you, they're not entrepreneurial or leaders, or like they are the best technical guru, the way to develop their career in the technical field is not to learn more languages, is not to learn more algorithms, is to understand the why, and be able to explain the why to more junior software developers so that they can write code the more informed, understanding what is the value that they bring in the world to their customer uh, and why they are doing what they're doing. Because everybody, to my, in my opinion, because uh, Razvan discussed about happiness, uh, in my world, my world view, happiness is about purpose and having a purpose and building something very technical that has a bigger purpose is something that inspires us and gives us uh, happiness. In your career, when did you first hear about this concept of startups? Very early on. I mean, I was very fortunate uh, to uh, to work with uh, with uh, great people. Uh, I had uh, many people that I consider mentors. Uh, uh, I I was in the early nineties um, working with Nini Popovic. Uh, we've built together the Roy Duna, the Romanian Educational Network, that also started in Bucharest and then spread out in the country. So I, I had a mental model for what we were building with Innovation Labs going in the country. You had to find partners in each university and then you know give them what you have and then tell them to continue to give it to pay it forward so that was uh, and uh, also uh, Razvan was very uh, close to the that concept and he uh, he he knew that um, uh, I also worked uh, with uh, Irina Tanasiu who was a great uh, teacher a great professor but she was she was the one that inspired me to, to bring the business world close to the academia. She was the first one to bring companies in the university. Um, uh, and uh, I also worked with Sherban Petrescu, who uh, we built the first products. We built like the first map of Bucharest and of the country and what the first ele Romanian elevator uh, back in, in the 90s. Uh, unfortunately, none of them is still around, so I'm trying to, uh, you know, to pay a tribute to them by paying this forward to, to other generations and teaching them how to build products, how to, you know, to build uh, communities uh, nationwide and, uh, and how to bring business uh, and academia together in order to create a, a more, more value. So, that, that they were my inspiration and uh, uh, I'm, you know, a doer by excellence, so I do things and then I 
question myself if they're good or not. Um, I, I, I always thought that I was a thinker, but I'm not. I mean, I was, I, when I was little, I was good in math and, you know, so I thought that I think things, I don't. I just do them and then think them, <laughs> which is, uh, it is what it is. And I think this is uh, the, the uh, defining uh, uh, skill or, or a trait or gene of, uh, of a founder is somebody who doesn't learn through trying. Thank you. And I'm glad you mentioned this, uh, this thing about ac academia and businesses. And Razvan, this brings me to, to my question to you. How have you seen this collaboration between academia and corporations, businesses evolve over the, over the years? And do you think that uh, nowadays students have a lot more opportunities than they did five, ten years ago? I mean, uh, internships, uh, uh, working for, for companies, also this, this thing about starting their own, their own businesses? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, for me it was uh, putting at the beginning uh, the graduation project of students in front of business-minded people. Uh, but Andre actually went a step further and actually on the second or third year, Come, came with a very ambitious idea, why don't we have internships at your own company? Go even to younger students. Uh, practical affirmata in Romanian. This was some of the things that actually resonated, not with all the students, but with some entrepreneurial-minded students. Um, of course, now we do have people that are bachelor students and they have this uh, great freedom to try an idea with their close friends to build teams while in university. And do you have uh, internships at your own company? Uh, of course, we have a number of, of uh, opportunities uh, throughout the country. The IT industry has developed a lot in the past 10 years, but also the companies are inside the university because uh, the Romanian society actually understood we cannot grow in pockets. Uh, without uh, symbiosis between business and university, we just remain in these shouting games, blaming game, oh, as a company, I'm blaming the universities for not teaching some very specific skill sets. As an university, I'm blaming the company that is recruiting students too early on without giving them the chance to develop some values. It's not just about knowledge, it's about values. And of course, having uh, access to your community with students, people with your age around, actually helps you a lot of uh, defining your path. If you are too young and get drafted in a, or a large organization where you are the youngest person, actually you bring the least value to that organization, which is an economic fact. You'll be, you'll be hard pressed to discover your own voice, the values that you need to lead your life. And so having an equilibrium between challenges connected to the uh, present market, not to the knowledge the professor have 20 years prior, uh, but also a safe zone for the young people to explore with people of their own age, with peers, with equals, not just as junior and everything comes with authority. You are a junior in a large corporation, you need to do A, B, C, D. Uh, it's not a way to explore the full potential of your personality. And uh, the same question also for you, because uh, you also mentioned defining uh, yourself. Um, who is Razvaran Ginic? A professor, a mentor, a startup founder? <laughs> I'm an explorer and uh, I enjoy uh, mental challenges and of course uh, I had this great opportunity uh, to explore a lot of uh, uncomfortable ideas with Andre. I, I remember in the third year actually so we had already two um, very successful events and I thought 
now we have it. We have the blueprint. We'll just replicate it and become better and better every single year. And Andre invited me very close by. He was uh, with Vector Watch. And uh, he invited me to a meeting. And our vision was connected technology companies with tech talent. And at that meeting was um, Jean-Baptiste uh, Ducaros, no, uh, the, non mm. the CEO of Carrefour Romania. And I thought, why we are meeting with Carrefour? We are a tech program. What does a retailer has to do with technology? And Andre seated me down and said, let's discuss. The values that technology brings shouldn't be limited just to the tech companies. And we need to challenge ourselves and take real life problems. The next, we had a retail uh, track, then we added an agricultural track, a medical track, because it's not about technology. It's about the value you can bring, and the value is bigger for mm, traditional uh, mm, economies than for an IT company that has uh, more business-minded and uh, self-reliant uh, uh, employees. So, so Innovation Labs was a journey of discovery also for both of us. I mean, uh, we discovered ourselves in uh, different uh, situations. Uh, uh, because also, I mean, you know, coming from different worlds, no matter how you know close we are and friends we are, we have different views of uh, of the same world. We we continue to have to this day. I mean, we debate uh, very very strongly, uh, and uh, I think that this is uh, actually the uh, uh, the key to building uh, something uh, successfully and something that would uh, to to find uh, partners that have. Uh, different views of the world, not the same view, otherwise, you know, you get redundant. And also what I pushed uh, from, let's say, uh, I pushed the program and also, you know, Razvan was uh, doing most of it and now the new generation is to do something new and something more every year, to, to become bigger, better, do something that's different every year, because otherwise, if you just get a blueprint and you apply it, like, then you remain behind because everybody else is evolving. So you have to evolve. Uh, and it's not easy. It's not easy to come up with ideas every year to do something different. It's not easy. That's why uh, we pass the baton to somebody to have more ideas. I mean, we did have 10 years of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> now it's their turn. <laughs> 10 more years. <laughs> Um, Razvan, you, me you mentioned about uh, about the retail track and about other other products using using tech, and uh, I would like to ask you both, and also Andre, you you come also with um, with your experience as a, as an investor, and you have a bird's eye view of the of what's happening in the ecosystem. When did we first start to see this kind of diverse? diversification of verticals. We're not just talking about tech, but we also talk about the prop tech, legal tech, I don't know, med tech, uh, any kind of thing. Fintech. Yeah, in, in Innovation Labs, at least, uh, this was uh, a little bit modeled uh, by the partners that we got uh, over the years. Uh, and uh, also, uh, based on their interest uh, and on their involvement in the program, and uh, as, as with anything, it's about people. I mean, it's about the people that were at all these companies that interfaced with the program and that helped us, you know. Uh, Orange helped us a lot at the beginning, you know, Microsoft was the first With Christian one, Patsakia, you know. 10 years later, he's part of the program. Of course, building around it, because Orange Fab is present in a lot of universities because of this long-lasting partnership. So, so all, all of this was, uh, we, we did not have a master plan beforehand, you know, that we're going to start like an agricultural track three years down the road. Uh, and we, we try to do the same like we preach to our uh, startups to uh, be mindful of the, you know, potential clients and partners and what are their needs and what do they bring to the table. And this is the, uh, uh, you know, constituent of a, a live ecosystem, you know, some, something that adapts to, to whatever happens. And uh, even in the future, you know, I mean, 
Uh, now I think that we'll uh, have to do a big push uh, towards AI uh, with uh, new generations. So there's going to be, in my opinion, I mean, at least this is what I see, I mean, in, in the trends that I see globally. Uh, so, you know, let's see, let's see what happens. Change every year and, uh, and get new domains and... Uh, Tech for tech is something that, you know, you learn in school and it's the closest and we started with that, I would say. But then, you know, tech for other domains, in order to do that, you have to understand those domains. And now people, I mean, like the young people are, I would say, more educated. I mean, I see them, they understand more from the environment. Yeah. Some of them come from, let's say, the countryside and they have, uh, maybe their parents have a big farm and maybe they saw some of the problems they can fix uh, with technology. So that's uh, that's a big uh, a big part of the program getting towards other verticals. Yeah. How do you guys see Romania and the Romanian startup ecosystem in the bigger Central European, Eastern Central and Eastern European tech and startup ecosystem? Uh, and how can academia help? Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Razvan elaborate on that. I know that he's very close to, to some of the moves that the European Union uh, makes. Uh, I want just to say that uh, uh, the VC funds are an European thing, uh, it's European, which is government money. It's like money from the state. So the state does invest in startups through the VC funds. Uh, and I think that's the wisest way to, to invest in startups. And I think that uh, the academia now starts to understand Hopefully, the role that they can play by uh, doing spin-offs and uh, getting funds uh, with for, for things that they've invented in the university, uh, so that would be a, a, a great way to 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 collaborate. And uh, uh, and you know, even more countries are getting interested. So I met with the president of the Weizmann Institute from from Israel, which is like one of the ten you know top ten most prestigious research. Uh, Institute in the world, and uh, he's very keen in getting uh, uh, master or, or PhD students and uh, and collaborating with the Romanian professors. So you know these things are starting to happen, and uh, uh, yeah, my I think that Romania is getting more and more present on the map. Uh, it's getting more and more known uh, in the U.S. as well. Uh, in Israel as well, and uh, also in other parts of Europe that are in different phases of developing this uh, ecosystem that, as I said, I mean, was not natural like in Silicon Valley. It's not like 50 years old anywhere else in Europe. I mean, it's all of the ecosystems have started pretty much at the same time. Uh, when uh, when Europe realized, uh, and when I was at Anis, I was in Brussels looking at a paper written by the European Commission at the time, uh, saying that Europe is very much behind America in terms of startups. What can we do? Then we have to build uh, ecosystems, we have to put money, we have to uh, engage with the ac academia. So all of those things, you know. And I said, you know, instead for, for, for wa waiting for that to happen, you know, let's, let's start early. And uh, that's, you know, another reason. But now Razvan is uh, very connected to, to, to what happens in Europe and... Uh, yeah, so uh, I really enjoy being close to Andre and this energy because it's about prototyping and starting as early on because you can become better uh, before others. Uh, of course, European Union is a much larger uh, organization and of course has an inertia, uh, but the language is very mature now. Uh, we are not seeing just financing research. So 10 years ago, it was just uh, research and uh, papers. Now we see different kind of financing in based on the technical readiness level. So if it is just an idea, if it is deep technology, yeah, you have some um, venues for financing your idea, usually inside an university. On a second stage, uh, you need to have uh, a relation with a business partner and this is financed both in university and 
on small scale companies because a free market uh, is a market with multiple players and European Union is trying to uh, focus on competitiveness, uh, having as many tech players as possible. And of course, the final part of the product where the product usually leaves the university with royalties, with IP for the inventors, for the founders, but of course, uh, someone who is research oriented would not have the discipline to build a great company. And of course, we have these different types of uh, financing uh, and different language, different people engage in evaluating because you cannot take a person from, from uh, business minded uh, companies and uh, validate uh, very early uh, naive ideas uh, that can change the world, but maybe in 10 years time. You have to have a different mind frame and uh, European Union addresses differently with money and people, uh, different challenges. Um, talking about challenges and looking further on, um, my last question for you is, what do you think that is next for the Romanian startup ecosystem? Are we lacking something? Are we missing something? What are our opportunities in five years time, 10 years time? I, I think that uh, we are on the right path. Uh, what uh, we would need to accelerate in my opinion is uh, the uh, understanding of uh, Western markets uh, where we can, because we can build products in Romania, but sell them to Western Europe or uh, the US. Uh, and um, that's, that's what I think uh, we're still a little bit uh, narrow focused uh, and even in, you know, this program, other programs in finding and entrepreneurs by them, you know, they find the solution that's closest to them and they try to, to, to solve that. Right. But sometimes uh, sometimes the same problem exists elsewhere and you can solve that. Uh, and you can generate more income because because there, for instance, if you o automate something uh, in Romania uh, and uh, the cost of doing that manually by somebody who's not very well qualified is not very big. So the value that you are bringing by automating something is not so big. Whereas if you automate something uh, in a you know bigger economy where even the cost of like manual uh, I don't know labor is very very high, then the, your the value of your solution is bigger. That's why I think this is the opportunity that I see, uh, and I don't know exactly how we're gonna solve it, but I see that uh, a uh, closer look at uh, uh, the uh, markets in the US, UK, uh, Europe. Uh, would help us understand, uh, would help the next generation of entrepreneurs understand what they can build in order to address those markets. And uh, I see more of that now, but still less than uh, what, in my opinion, would, uh, would be necessary. And uh, I would like to also get out of this paradigm where we know we test in Romania first and then we launch internationally, because Romania is probably the uh, hardest country to replicate in the world. Is the most you know it's it's unique in the sense that it it is a Latin language country that used to be communist that has a Christian uh, le, uh, religion Orthodox, Orthodox, Orthodox Christian religion um, that is nowhere else in the world you have that, with right? very good English speaking people with very good English speaking people that can address uh, <laughs> get, that can address a different market so yeah. we could do that I mean but. Our conditions and our kind, if you are successful in Romania, that almost always means that you'll be never successful anywhere else. So <laughs> being successful in Romania first means that's it. You have to, you know, make your product the best product in Romania and then sell it to somebody. Uh, but if you start by trying to be, even if you're like very, very, you know, like remotely, so like tiny, tiny successful in the US, that means much more than if you're like number one in Romania in terms of, uh, you know, value. Uh, since Andre addressed uh, this very uh, close 
ambition and I do think uh, addressing global markets it's mandatory for our mindset um, I would uh, take the liberty to uh, dream even further and um, I would uh, hope to live in a city where uh, being part of a meetup being part of a hackathon would be as valuable as going to theater to attending cultural events because it's expanding your imagination your worldview nowadays such events are usually targeted to tech people to business minded people but if we let just engineers and journalists and uh, business people define the technology that actually affects all of us, uh, then we'll just be uh, complaining about the lack of diversity or uh, any things that the technology doesn't do. The technology is present in all our lives. We need to take part in defining the technology and we need to rethink the way technology is built. So having events with large participation for people from philosophy, from communication, from, uh, of course, different kinds of policy. Politicians should be part of hackathons. So this was the vision we started Innovation Labs when Andre said, OK, we had such a great idea. Uh, you need to have the, uh, when I went to Paris to, Paris to uh, start an event, the mayor of Paris was not just opening the event, yeah, talking for five, ten minutes and then leaving, what every single politician does, but was part of a full day engaging with startups because she was ex expanding her own uh, imagination. We just have tech people, people staying with tech people, politicians stay with politicians, uh, and we, we, this is we, a missed opportunity. We did manage to bring, I mean, we wanted uh, all the time to have uh, uh, politicians, uh, you know, we had ministers, we had, uh, you know, even the yeah. president, uh, many years. And uh, throughout the time, I mean, some of these politicians, I mean, they stayed, you know. Yeah. One of them, you know, who was a minister, even came the next year with a team. Uh, at, 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 so we, we've done this uh, and uh, we, but we can do, you know, so much. I mean, we cannot force them to come. The ones that come, I would say, they're very good and very interested. Uh, somehow they tend to leave the politics after a while, or yeah. they, they they tend to be changed. <laughs> um, if they are in the government, if they are ministers, the the government changes every every year or so, which is uh, very hard to you know to establish a relationship with. Um, the the good thing is that. Uh, we are still pushing for that. We are still getting uh, the state part. We are getting the universities, and universities are a constant presence. I mean, all parts of the society should actually meet in defining the technology of the future. And I do think Bucharest is a great place to start. Uh, what's next for you guys now that Innovation Labs is in the hands of, a, of another generation? Andre, you're you're back to entrepreneurship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I always. Um, this was always a project that was very important for me, but it was always not just the only project. The project that I've done in parallel with VectorWatch, the project that I've done in parallel with you know being at Fitbit or with Simple Capital. Now I'm getting back to to entrepreneurship and you know starting a new startup, Genesio, and I'm gonna be 100% on that. Um, of course, I'm gonna still be involved in the in, in, in the in the in innovation labs. Um, I have a lecture. I will be uh, at, at the final event in the jury, so uh, and in a panel. Uh, so I'm very close. But I think that whatever you, if you build, if you are, if you start something, if you you know, like innovation labs, uh, or like tech angels, or you know. Uh, or things you know that uh, you start then if you are able to find people that can take it on they then can live forever uh, otherwise you know there's a lot of things a lot of good things a lot of great people have started that died with them yeah. uh, and uh, and uh, and for me it's very important that uh, uh, whatever I build uh, should be able to live forever and for that I always look for uh, for somebody or for a team of people that can, that I can you know, give it to them. 
for me, the challenge is uh, to get uh, resources from an university, which is usually full of very passionate people with a lot of autonomy, uh, helping uh, the K-12, usually the high school. Uh, the challenge for many of the high schools is uh, keeping uh, students engaged with materials. Uh, I'm building a number of competition. We also started with Andre 18 years ago, um, the National Olympiad of Applied Informatics. And uh, I'm trying to have it last year. Uh, the, we had uh, just 22 districts in Romania. Now we had 37. So uh, getting uh, high school uh, professors engaged with uh, university professor, I think it's very beneficial for, uh, for our future students, for people in high school today.